What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Entertainment Weekly just put out a huge article on their website and it is titled, How the Cameo Stacked, Deadpool and Wolverine Carves Out a New Future for Marvel's Mutants. Deadpool and Wolverine is going to completely change the MCU. And everybody's been looking at this movie wondering how exactly are they going to introduce the mutants and if they're going to address the fact that there haven't been mutants in the MCU up until this point. Well, a little bit ago, actually, if we're counting Miss Marvel. Kamala Khan is technically a mutant. Namor is technically a mutant. But that's all we've really got to know X-Men in the MCU. And in this article, they actually explain why. But most importantly, we're going to talk about the future of the X-Men in the Marvel Cinematic Universe going to Secret Wars and then after Secret Wars. Now, this article is fantastic, but it's also very long and we're not going to go over the entire thing. The first half of it pretty much talks about the road to Deadpool and Wolverine and we've gone over that and we'll touch on that a bit. But what is really interesting is that this article is broken off into parts and there's one part titled Mutant Mayhem and that's where things get awesome and they basically they don't give away spoilers but they essentially say look yes there's a ton of cameos in this movie which of course we knew but now they are really starting to market that some of these old X-Men Fox characters are indeed going to be returning. So let's break down what they said. Now, like I mentioned, the first part is essentially about how everything came together for Deadpool and Wolverine. Of course, we have the original X-Men film in which Hugh Jackman debuted as Wolverine. Kevin Feige also worked on that film as well. It was his first Marvel film he worked on. Then of course, Ryan Reynolds would debut as the original Wade Wilson slash Deadpool that we saw in X-Men Origins Wolverine, which we all try to to forget about and Ryan Reynolds even in the post credit scene for Deadpool 2 tried to end and make it to where that never happened but of course we live in real life and it did however it all led to where we are now now Sean Levy also worked with Hugh Jackman on Real Steel in 2011 and then of course Sean Levy worked with Ryan Reynolds on Free Guy and The Atom Project and now the four of them have come together after decades Ryan Reynolds Hugh Jackman Sean Levy and Kevin Feige and of course originally Deadpool 3 did not include Wolverine until Hugh Jackman had a midlife crisis, as he said, and he called up Ryan and said, I gotta be in the next Deadpool film. In fact, he said when he watched Deadpool 2, right after he announced that he retired as Logan slash Wolverine, he said he instantly regretted it because he saw Deadpool 2 and went, oh, I need to be in one of these films. And now we have Deadpool and Wolverine. And like I said, you can check out the whole article. It's a great article, but we're going to fast forward to the end part that states mutant mayhem. And what's really interesting is we have a picture here that they put under the section of Wolverine. It appears like it's the same scene that we got from the new trailer where Wolverine seemingly fights Sabretooth. He is crouched and it looks like he's about to run at Sabretooth and he is perfectly positioned to block whoever is in that cage behind him. We saw somebody in that cage in the trailer, but this picture is perfectly taken to where you can't see who's behind him in that cage. So it looks like there's a big cameo in that one. So it starts off by stating everyone is keeping mum on the specific story Reynolds and Levy cooked up with Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick, as well as Zeb Wells. They want to preserve the fun, though the filmmaker likens Deadpool and Wolverine to earlier Marvel movies in that the character stakes are more important than the global MCU stakes, which is very interesting. It continues, what we know for certain is that the film takes place six years after the events of Deadpool 2. Wade has hung up his uniform. He's no longer dating Vanessa, and he seems content, perhaps in a depressed way, to work as a used car salesman. While celebrating his birthday with pals from the previous two films, including Blind Al, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, and Colossus, agents of the Time Variance Authority pluck Wade out of his reality and bring him to meet their boss, Mr. Paradox, who informs Deadpool that there's a bigger fate in store for him. And here's where we dive into a little bit deeper aspects of the film that they reveal here. It states, what that fate is exactly is anyone's guess, and the fans have indeed been guessing, but we know it involves setting Wade on a collision course with with an alternate reality version of Wolverine, who's still played by Hugh Jackman, but is not the same character as the one from the past X-Men movies. You have Wade Wilson, who is like an impetuous motormouth child in a superheroic man's body. And you have the laconic, largely nonverbal gruff Logan. On the surface, they're completely different, which is what makes them a perfect comedic duo. But they're both haunted by regret, and there's a darkness and a sadness and ultimately a solitude to both these heroes that also make them 
anti-heroes. That was said by Sean Levy, the director, which I really love. I love that these two characters are anti-heroes and we kind of knew that, but there is a lot of depth here to these characters. And there's a lot of depth to Cassandra Nova, it seems, the villain. They say, we also know the story involves Cassandra Nova, who plays the duo psychic adversary with a complicated comic book history. They say she's not technically Xavier's twin, but rather an alien parasite that appeared to Xavier in utero and formed into his polar opposite. She says that Ryan and Sean said, to her when pitching the idea, we want this villain to not be a villain in the sense that you expect them to be. We want you to be so endeared by her, so charmed by her, and just when you think that maybe she's totally seen into your soul and you are going to be best friends for life, you're dead. She said they wanted her to be unpredictable, sort of like Christopher Waltz from Inglorious Bastards. He's so disarmingly polite and nice and unaffected, and it's really creepy. It's all the more sinister because he doesn't need to do anything. And if you haven't seen that movie and seen that character, you should. His character is amazing. The movie's amazing in general. But here is where we dive into the cameos. They state plenty of other characters will be popping up in Deadpool and Wolverine. Loads more. And some of them will be self-aware callouts to the history of the Fox X-Men movies. It's just that Reynolds, Jackman, and Levy are not commenting on any of them, even after paparazzi released photos from the set that heavily suggested certain X-Men movie characters would return. We didn't want any of the cameos or the characters to be the story of the movie, Levy explains, but they are peppered in throughout. There's a lot of characters. The internet is a delight of rumors about the multitude of character cameos that are in this movie. Some rumors are true, some are way off base. So I like this a lot because this basically says, hey, yes, we have a ton of cameos peppered throughout this entire movie. There are going to be a lot, but that's not what the movie is about. They have a story and it's really deep, but they also are playing with the multiverse and there are going to be a lot of cameos in there, but it's going to fit within the main bigger story. And I love that. There is fan service, but it's done within an amazing story. They do say this though, which is very revealing. Wade himself is a fan without giving anything away about the various universes the different characters live in because he's in some ways a fawning motor mouth little fanboy himself. It allows the movie to call out and reference a ton of deep cut Marvel references. So they are fully diving into the fact that Deadpool slash Wade Wilson is a big fan of all of the X-Men, of all of the Avengers, and there's going to be a lot of cameos, and Deadpool is going to be really happy seeing all those cameos. We've seen the Sabretooth scene already, and whether he's talking about Sabretooth or the Hulk or somebody else, he does say that, hey, fans have been waiting decades for this fight. So Deadpool knows exactly what's going on, which makes this movie already awesome. Now, the article finishes by talking about how some of the X-Men are coming back and they get to play sort of new characters because most of these characters, albeit the same character, are going to be variants of the ones they played before. And a lot of them talk about how excited they are to come back. And they talk about how this is the MCU's first R-rated film, which Kevin Feige said was always the mission from the start. They knew it was going to be rated R. There was no intention of making it PG-13. And when it comes to Deadpool and Wolverine saving the MCU and talking about superhero fatigue, the director Sean Levy said this, Marvel had some misses. So he agrees, but also says, people are way too quick to declare the last rights of the superhero genre. I don't buy into that fatigue narrative. And we like that confidence because it makes us feel more confident about Deadpool and Wolverine. But the last thing they say here is really interesting. They say it's unclear if Reynolds and Jackman will make more Marvel movies with Disney after this, which we already know that they're going to, but they continue. But press has already reported an X-Men movie is in development for this particular universe. Feige declines to comment on this beyond what he's already said, which is July 26th is really when it all starts, when Deadpool and Wolverine comes out. So what that basically means is when Deadpool and Wolverine comes out, that is when the X-Men and the MCU truly start, and that will affect the future X-Men before Secret Wars and then of course after. So this is kind of pointing to what we have all already been thinking. Deadpool is going to be the movie that addresses that there haven't been any X-Men in the current MCU. And what better way to address that than the person who can break the fourth wall and call things out. But since this is a giant multiverse movie and we know it is going to directly affect and go into Avengers Secret Wars, this is the film that will bring the X-Men into the MCU and make people wonder, well, these are 
the X-Men from other universes, where are the X-Men from the main sacred timeline? So for those wondering when the actual X-Men who are going to fight in Avengers Secret Wars are going to come into the big picture of the MCU, the answer is Deadpool and Wolverine on July 26th. This will be great. It's going to be a huge buildup. We're going to have a lot of old Fox X-Men characters that are going to return, but also new ones that we have never seen before. And that's going to lead up to Secret Wars. And then after Secret Wars, that's where we believe, and it's been reported, that everything is going to reset and we're going to start from essentially phase one. But this time we'll have the Avengers, the X-Men, the Fantastic Four, the Hulk, hopefully. And finally, this giant superhero world will be able to have all of the heroes start together from the beginning. And that's really exciting, but so is what's about to happen in Deadpool and Wolverine up to Avengers Secret War. So go ahead, let me know how excited you are about this and just essentially about the future of the MCU in the comments down below. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you can stay up to date on Deadpool and Wolverine and of course the entirety of the MCU. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.